to another edition of Monday Motivation with Bukola. It's a show about inspiration, women empowerment, beauty, business, money, culture, entertainment, and advocacy. And today, I bring you another fabulous show and several fabulous authors. So in this episode, I'm going to be focusing on Jerry Darby, the the author of Stepping Stones Reflections for Singles Volume 1 and she talked about, I had the interview several weeks ago, I'm just bringing it to you this week, she talked about a mission to empower singles and encouraging singles to empower one another in the Christian community, at church, at home, in your own local community, how can you empower other singles around you so this episode is bringing you two lipstick lip balm and literacy virtual book reading series so the first one was an interview with jerry on facebook and the second one is an author's fair the anoka county second annual author's fair <laughs> It was fun. <laughs> it was fun. So I was at the author's fair and I had the privilege of speaking to so all the authors, actually, all the authors. I spoke to all the authors present at that book fair. So you'll be meeting them in this episode of Monday Motivation with Booker Land. And I want to share the quote of today. The quote of today is from Moi again. Whatever you set your heart to do, just do it. <laughs> I take that again. Whatever you set your heart to do, do it. So in essence, what is it that you really desire in your heart to do? Just do it. Do it. Don't worry whether it's perfect or it's not perfect. We are always focusing on perfection. Trust me, perfection will come from your hiccups, from your mistakes, from your challenges, from your struggles in putting your hard desire to work. So go ahead and put your hard desire to work today. Do not wait another second to put your hard desire to work. <laughs> We see that Bacola is an avid music person and an avid dancer. <laughs> Welcome to another Lipstick, Lip Balm and Literacy Virtual Book Reading Series here on Facebook. And my fabulous author this morning is Jerry Darby. And she is the author of Stepping Stones Reflections for Singles, Volume 1. She helps singles to reflect on their lives and themselves and help them out of toxic relationships, either with themselves or with others, and empowers them to see the better in themselves. She's also a nurse. She has been a practicing nurse for over 25 years. So she's been caring for people. She's a selfless giver because nurses are people who give selflessly. They see people in the worst states and they try to bring them back to their back state. So thank you so much for the selfless work you are doing and then focusing on singles. Thank you. Thank you so much for coming on the show. So uh, I would like to ask you, <laughs> why singles? <laughs> why singles? It's like you should write about what you know about. And I've been single for, I lose track of the years. It's been over 20 something years. So I know about living single and I know about the struggles we experience as single Christians. And I wanted to uh, offer something to encourage people. So what will you say are those specific challenges of single Christians? 
specific challenges? Well, yeah. it's like we okay. go through. Okay. So do they have a kind of specific challenges? Well, specific challenges is uh, the very obvious one is being alone in a couple's world, a world that's focused on couples, and even going to church when uh, the sermons are going to be geared to marriages and, and uh, happen to strengthen marriages. And I feel that singles are very under ministered to, and not purposely, but when you got a married pastor, uh, you know, it's not they don't know what to say to us, except that, remember Paul said, you're better off single, and then they parade off the stage with their wife or with their husband, but um, singles need more than that to sustain us on this journey, and it is a transformational journey, uh, living a life as a single Christian. Hmm. Thank you for making mention of that, because... I believe that you are right in terms of focusing on the married in churches sometimes and neglecting the singles. So what would you suggest can be done to start making singles more inclusive instead of random singles fellowship? Well, I think that it has to start with the single people also because sometimes as singles we have built walls around ourselves and we don't easily engage with uh, other people. I think we feel misunderstood and we don't want people to feel like we're desperate and that's all we uh, eat, sleep, and breathe is uh, I want to be in a relationship. So we don't want to come across looking that way. And then when there are singles ministries, uh, it tends to be mostly women. And uh, so, you know, I think it starts with us that we can't wait for the church to do something to encourage us. We first of all have to encourage ourselves. And then we have to just look and, and ask God and see what God is putting in us to bring forth that's going to help empower other singles. You know, we are single, but we don't have to be alone. And last night, I invited a group of single friends to join me at an outdoor activity. It was a concert. And we worked together in the past, had not seen each other in years, but we had a blast. So we have to take responsibility, you know, for this journey and sharing it with other people. So those singles you invited yesterday, were they all female? or mixture of female and male? They were all female. They were okay. all female. Okay, that brings me to the question I had before that came up. And the question is, what can be done to include men in singles fellowship? Because you had mentioned earlier that in singles fellowship, they are mostly women. So what can be done to include men in those fellowships because there are single men too i believe oh yes, but yes focus there are... only on single women right <laughs> right and and what happens it's like when a single man comes to a single function and i'm i'm speaking in generalities because I'm sure there are other single functions out there that have a balance of men and women, but I can only speak for those that I have witnessed um, over the years. I have seen some that have been very successful also. And I think it's uh, what you're offering in the ministry. And I also think that single people have to get beyond that mentality uh, that you know when you sit down and you have a conversation with each other, uh, people don't want to be afraid that you're already at the altar, you know, <laughs> you, you're just having a fellowship, you're just talking, like I took these, uh, uh, a group of women to another singles fellowship, and it was men and women, and before we could get to the parking lot, they're like matchmaking, and say, oh, that would be a good person with for you, and so forth, but um, I think what single people need to do, because many of us have been divorced, many of us have been in uh, dysfunctional relationships and are carrying uh, wounds and pains and still working out those issues. So I think we just need to learn how to have conversations with each other 
appropriate conversations. You know, I run across some women that they talk too much. And when I say they, some women are talkers. And sometimes- Like me, <laughs> guilty. <laughs> <laughs> but no, you're doing really good. You're allowing me opportunity to speak. I have been in groups with people where you ask them a question and then for the remainder of the group, they're answering their question. And so I think even when it comes to conversations between men and women, that sometimes women just need not to talk so much, you know, and allow the other person the opportunity to speak too. Wow. So would you encourage uh, women to be more of a listener than a talker? You know, again, that's different for everybody because I am a listener. <laughs> I am a listener and less of a talker. But I'm just saying if, if that shoe fits you where you're talking and talking and talking, then yes, you do need to quiet yourself down and be more of a listener. But um, for me, I, my, uh, my uh, challenge is to be more of a talker because sometimes I walk away uh, in conversations and I haven't asked my questions and I wish I would have said and I wish I would have, you know, so my challenge is to be more of a talker. Wow. So in essence, you are encouraging to look at yourself and see where you think your weakness is in terms of communication, speaking and hearing, and then work on the one that you think you are struggling with. I think that's a, a very good way to put it. Yes, yes, because this is a journey. And I think being single offers an excellent opportunity to get to know yourself. Because when you're in a relationship, some people have just lost their identity mm -hmm. in a relationship because it comes all about what the other person wants and needs. We all seen coming to America and, and when he was going to marry the um, the chosen bride, and he was like, what do you like? And I was like, whatever you like, whatever you like, you know. And, and sometimes we just give up too much of ourselves in a relationship, and it is whatever you like. So being single is about reclaiming your identity, identifying what you like, because sometimes over the years we have let go of that, and we don't even know what we think, we don't know what we feel, we don't know what we like, and especially we need to get in touch with our God-given identity. You know, why am I here? Because we're not here just to marry and have children. That's not the whole total purpose that we're here. So we really need to get in touch with that identity. So what will be your recommendation in terms of getting in touch with your own identity or knowing yourself? What would you say... Uh, those opportunities are or what somebody can do to start knowing herself. What's a woman, right? We are speaking to women, right? So what can a woman do to start knowing herself and knowing what she wants and what she does not want? Well, actually, I'm speaking to uh, anybody in general okay. because okay. what happens as where it starts is with our creator. It's spending time with God and emptying out. You know, um, Jesus is known as a wonderful counselor. And you know, some of us uh, have tried counselors or maybe in counselors for past wounds, but I can remember that uh, I went through a season that I was so hurt that uh, the enemy would battle my mind with the pain from the past and rooting all the way back to childhood and unforgiveness. And then um, Jesus invited me to come to counseling with him. And so I did that. I set aside a time and every day I would meet with my counselor. Jesus. And what would happen is like during those sessions, I would cry, I would say it wasn't fair, I would have the pity party, but that was only for that time of the day. And the rest of the day, when the enemy would come, I would say, oh, I have an appointment with my counselor. I'm not going to think about that stuff. I'm not going to deal with it until I'm in session. And what happened over time, 
my pity parties turn into a praise party. And I could, uh, I, I understood that in his presence, I received healing. So I, that's where it starts. Because what I encourage singles to do is to be about their father's business. And in fact, that's the name of the singles ministry that I'm a part of today is the father's business. Because I feel that once we get, once we get um, clarity on what God wants us to do and we're about our father's business, then if you meet someone, they're going to know who you are in the natural. They're going to know who you are in the spiritual. And it's not like you meet someone and then all of a sudden, well, you know, God wants me to travel all over the world and do this and do that. And they're like, I didn't sign up for this. But if you are about your father's business and you're doing whatever God told you to do, you're increasing the chances that you're going to be um, attracted to or draw someone that's compatible because they already see what you're doing. They already see what you're about. And I, I just believe that when we're about our father's business, that God will make it his priority that whoever he has for us will find us. Wow. Thanks. And um, now I'm going to go into your book. So Stepping Stones Reflections for Singles, Volume 1. So are you planning, first of all, are you planning to write... Um, from volume one, it shows that there is going to be multiple ones coming. So how many should we be expecting after volume one? Well, I plan to do a volume two, and I'm going to focus on stepping stones, reflections for season singles, because God has given me clarity that he's called me to minister to his season people because um, the enemy is doing immense warfare against uh, people that are in the body and they're older, they have been praying, they've been waiting, and they're getting discouraged. So my um, agenda and my assignment right now was I'm calls are coming through, but um, are for the seasoned people. And so I'm going to do a volume two to that uh, group of people. And then I'm gonna do a yearly devotional because I'm just a lover of devotionals. I love devotionals and it's nothing more powerful to me than to pick up devotional and turn to the day of the week or the exact date and read it. And it speaks exactly to what I'm going through. And so that's my prayer, God. I want a devotional that's gonna speak to the heart of your people on the very day that they need it. Wow, thanks. I want to acknowledge those who are watching us live. Thank you so much for joining us. I saw Honorable Ronnie came in and I saw um, Pastor Peter Ayodele came in too. So thank you so much. And if I didn't get to mention you, thank, thank you so much for coming in. And if you have questions, please post your questions. The, the, thing, the book, do you have a copy to show the group or the audience rather? Yes, I do. Um, um, this is my book, um, Stepping Stones, Reflections wow. for Singles, Volume 1. And it is also available in Spanish. Hey! And so hey. this book is available on my website, and that's at www.jerrydarbyspeaks. Or on my Facebook page, you can get there, Jerry Darby Speaks. It's also available on Amazon. And I didn't share my second book. I want to share my second book. Good. This is God Loves Me, Cellulite and All. And this is just an illustrated poem that I wrote um, because, you know, it's, it's difficult dealing with the changes that we have in our bodies sometimes. Yes. So God gave, gave me a poem to comfort me during that time. And it's also available in Spanish. Oh, and you can read oh. those on the same websites. Oh, my goodness. Nice. So, um... Do you hire somebody to translate your books into Spanish? Yes, I, I use Fiverr. And, you know, you can find some very um, reliable people on Fiverr. The first translation I was not pleased with, but I did find someone that um, I'm really pleased with. 
Oh, nice. You, you hear that? That is book tip for you. Book tip publishing because, you know, um, some of the things we get here are tips from authors. So you can get someone to help you translate your book to another language on Fiverr. Thank you, La Monique, for posting her link. I also have the link in the, in the comment today. I'm going to edit this video when it's done, so put the description on the video. I did when I was setting up, but somehow when it went live, my description had disappeared. I don't know what happened. So I put it in the comment. So all the links to Derby you can get. No, to Jerry, right? Derby is your last name. Yes. So to Jerry yes. you can get. And I will edit this video when it's done to to include the description. So I want to also say that for those of you who are watching on YouTube, because this is going to go on Monday Motivation with Bukola on my YouTube channel, you can also get it in the description. And for those of you who will be watching at home, you are going to see the link on the screen. So you will see the link on the screen of the TV and you can go to that link. Thanks so much, Jerry. Um, I wanted to ask the first book, how long did it take you to do that book? To write my book? Yes. Oh, okay. Well, what happened when I first started the journey and when I first heard the call, because writing truly is a call and, and it's a call that the enemy will battle you immensely against in your mind. First, he will um, make you feel that you have no right to call yourself a writer. So I had to go through that battle. What makes you think you're a writer? And you're a writer because God says you're a writer. So after I faced that battle, then it's like, well, God, I don't know how to write a book. And so what I did over the next 20 years, now, God didn't tell me to take 20 years, but I went through uh, publishing for magazines and submitting and in publications and other formats so I could learn about the writing business. And so what God said is like at every step of the journey, whenever you're ready, I'm going to have someone there to take you to the next step and to the next level. And so he actually surrounded me with people like, when are you going to write your book? And I have one writer saying, look, write your book by this date and we'll do a book signing together. And she just kept checking in with me, checking in. And then uh, I had my daughter saying, the book is done. The book is done because she was editing for me. And so, you know, finally, I released my book after 20 years, even though it had been done. I had been editing over and over. And so that's one of the things we have to do as a writer. We have to have the courage to just release and let it go because if it's not perfect you can go up back and fix it you know i like i like that that if it's not perfect you can go back and fix it and you just need to be writing and writing so the process of writing is done but then you now go into the phase of um publishing the book so um how did you get it published well, just like I said, that God said he would have someone right there. Back when he initially was uh, speaking to me about publishing a book, um, it was like you had to have a publisher or you did the self-publishing through companies that charged a whole lot. Then you ordered all these books and people were spending a lot of money and having books in their garage that they couldn't sell. And so... I guess it was good that I waited 20 years because <laughs> what happened, God is just putting such a demand on his writers. He's calling them forth. And he's made the process so easy that anybody can um, basically publish a book. It's very simple. You could be your own publisher. And I published my own book, you know, through uh, people stepping in and giving me the directions I need. And so I plan to publish many, many other books uh, because of that. Wow. Nice. Thank you. What advice would you give to someone who is aspiring to publish his or her first book? Well, I would say uh, own the fact that you're a writer. 
you know, at first you got to own that identity. You got to uh, put Satan under your feet and say, I am a writer. And if you're one that's been struggling with that, start today saying, I am a writer. Because what you have to understand is that Satan hates writer with such a passion because God put himself in a book. And I'm going to say that again. God put himself in a book, and 2,000 years later, that book is still setting people free and changing the world. And, and what happens... He's still putting revelation in his people all over, and he wants us to release it in a book because when we're dead and gone, our books will continue to witness to the goodness of, of God. I like what you just said. God put himself in a book to spread the word about himself, and we need to do the same thing about what we are doing. And then... Uh, do you have any marketing tips? Because you mentioned how some people were paying a lot of money for publishing their books and getting a lot of copies sitting in their garage that they couldn't sell. Do you have any tips for authors on how to get their books to sell? Well, you know, that is the part of the journey that I am continuing to work on. It's like... Um, with the self-publishing, we do have the benefit of print on demand. So you don't have to print a thousand books, you know, and people can order your books and they're printed as they order. So that's a benefit that you're not just investing a whole lot of money. But the other part of that is once you write a book, you discover that's the easy part. Then you still have to go to war, you know, because, uh, I'm in a season where I'm starting to market again. When I first wrote a book, I marketed and I sold book. But then the enemy award for my voice again. And, and I'm reclaiming that voice as I am a writer. I have books in my trunk. I'm going to sell these books. And so um, writing a book is the easy part. And I think as long as you're talking about your book, don't let him take your voice. Because no one's going to buy a book that they don't know exists. But sometimes he'll make you compare yourself with other people and tell you, your book isn't all that. You know, you know maybe you shouldn't be so vocal. And so anyway, you got to reclaim your voice. And you have to understand that if God led you into writing this book, then he has a, a target group of people for it. And, you know, one writer said she wrote her book in 2011, and now 2017 is really beginning to sell. So don't get discouraged if you, you don't go to number one on the New York bestseller list. Because, it's, you know, for us, we want to make money, and God has promised to prosper the works of our hand. But for God, it's also about purpose. It's also about um, people. It's also about, um, you know, have, having people to write a walk in a new reality. And we can, um, like I said, 100 years from now, our books can continue to be a blessing to people. That's my doorbell, but I'm sure someone will get it. But, <laughs> but uh, another thing I want to share, it's like I was a reader, you know, and I, I, I love surrounding myself with books because books make me feel safe. And there's been times during my struggles when I didn't know what to do, where to turn. And I would go to my bookshelf and pull a book out and read a paragraph. And that would just stand me back on my feet, get me focused and get me going. So don't underestimate the power of your words and the power of the things that God pour into you to encourage other people. Because we are his witnesses. And sure, we can share our testimony of people here, a person here, a person there, or in a group. But when you share your testimony in a book, you can reach the world, and you'll continue to reach the world for years to come. Wow. I want to quickly acknowledge Mr. Ehi Brahima from Nigeria joining us. Thank you so much for coming in the room, Sam. You... You say something about a book being published in 2011 and it's only in 2016 that it started picking up. Yes. Was that the only book the author had published or the author had published other books? 
Now, to my knowledge, that was her only book. book. That was her only book, to my knowledge. Okay, wow. You know, it's encouraging to to see someone not giving up and throwing in the towel, thinking, okay, my book didn't sell, and I'm just going to give up, but um, someone who keeps pushing forward to get a book to sell. What is your own... Um, um, what is your opinion about having multiple books or publishing multiple books? I think it's great. If God gives me grace, I'm going to pu publish a hundred books before I leave. I, I, think it's, <laughs> I think it's wonderful. And it's like, um, because we have, we are his witnesses. And we have so much experience. Those have, that have been walking with uh, God and he has brought us through certain circumstances. But there's still a people. And, and the Bible says that when Jesus was here, that the people that sat in darkness saw great light. And so uh, there's still a people that the things we're struggling with or the things that we have come through to the other side, they're struggling. They may not go to church. They may be isolated, don't have friends. So, you know, if you are divorced, then, you know, share that journey. Sometimes we try to put everything in one book, but uh, our life can't fit. You can't fit your life in one book. So you can share segments of your journey. Like if you had a struggle with going back to college, share that journey in a book. You don't have to put everything in one book. And then people will get greater clarity and, and they will appreciate that experience so much more. So it's not just about, uh, again, trying to make money, but it's about I am his witness and anything I can do to um, to advance the kingdom of God, I'm going to do it. And if you're called to be a writer, you know, God may have called you just to write letters to encourage people. This one woman shared, uh, this one man shared how he was going to college and this 70 year old woman said, can I write letters to you? You might just be called to write letters to people in prison or whatever, but whatever level of calling God has placed on your life, just be faithful to it. Some people feel like it takes a whole lot of talent and everything to be a writer. But in the book of Revelation, what God told him to do, write what you see, write what you hear. And we can write what God has done. You don't have to know how to spell all the words and put all the dots and periods in the right place. There's people that know how to do that. Just get your story written and God will have the next person there for you. Yes, thanks so much. I really like that because um, self-publishing has given a platform to everybody to have a voice in a book. If you want to do a book, you don't have to wait yep. on a traditional publisher anymore to do that. You don't have to be rejected. It's a way to do your thing. If somebody says no to you, you do your thing, and there are people and resources available to get it done like the traditional publisher for you. So do you also design your book cover through Fiverr? Yes, Fiverr. I'm sorry. I'm still getting, people keep calling me back even when I end their call. So um, yes, Fiverr is a great resource for every area of the book uh, marketing part for formatting, book covers, uh, marketing, Again, you want to read their reviews and see um, what people are saying about them. But if you connect with the right person in Fiverr, uh, that could be uh, the next link to move you forward. Wow. Thanks so much. So what would be your last word for our audience this morning? My last word is like, I want you to beware, if you're in, in the writing journey at all, beware of distractions. And that's very important because every time a writer picks up a pen, or even if you just get a little scrap of paper and write down your ideal, or every time a writer moves toward his computer, uh, Satan is horrified. Because he doesn't know that if you're gonna birth and release something in the earth, 
that's going to destroy his kingdom and to set prisoners free. So he's horrified. And so every time you do that, expect to be distracted. And, and that's happened on and on in my journey as a writer. I have learned to ignore them and have learned to know that that's assignment of Satan's, but um, distractions can be in the form of a relationship that means you no good. That can be a form of distraction. It could be in the form of your children uh, misbehaving and getting on the wrong track. It could be, uh, it could come in the form of your job or, um, or having to move or just situations coming up that's going to distract you. And we know that life happens, but when it does, get back to your book. Because his uh, intention is to take your mind totally off that assignment and to never get there again. But you show him, oh, no, I'm going to always come back to this. I'm going to always come back to my assignment. Oh, thank you so much. So uh, are you wearing lipstick this morning? Um, yeah, don't ask me what kind. I really don't know. <laughs> what? <laughs> you coming on the lipstick show and you don't know what you are wearing? Uh, no, I, I, no, I'm sorry, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what color are you wearing? Um, it's like a, a, a maroon color, like, I guess. Okay, so me, I do wear more than one, and today I'm wearing two. I got this this week. I think I don't I don't see the price, but it was really cheap from the beauty supply store, and it's kind of lilac, and it's also a brand name that I'm not really familiar with. It's called Nikak New York, so. I tried it today, and I'm wearing it with my violet vaccine from Maybelline. So you guys must have seen this several times on me here. So that's what I'm wearing today. And you look thank very beautiful in it, too. I like it. Oh, thank you. I learned it from YouTube. <laughs> 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 I think you, too. Two listeners on YouTube. So thank you so much, our audience, this morning. And thank you, Lamonique, for posting all those comments. Lamonique was busy helping us to post tips from what you were saying in the comments. Thank you so much for coming this morning. I hope to see you next week on another Lipstick, Lip Balm, and Literacy Virtual Book Review Series here on Facebook and our fabulous author. Thank you so much for coming. I hope you will be back on the show. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Do I want to thank you again, too. And, uh, and thank everyone that joined, all my Facebook friends that joined and watched the replay. I want to say I appreciate you. Thank you so much. Thanks, thanks. Yes, and I saw Makina came in briefly. Thank you, Makina. I know right now Nate is at the Mayo Clinic. If you remember, Nate was here, like, I think two weeks ago on the show. He's a 14-year-old boy who had done 22 surgeries brain surgeries at the age of 11 is back at the Mayo Clinic with more surgeries. And I think he has, he had done two in the past one week because his mom was sharing pictures on Facebook. Nate, you are in my heart and I'm praying for you. So please, our audience listening, kindly pray for Nate for quick recovery and complete healing of his health. It's not easy to be going through brain surgeries. Please pray for Nate. Thank you so much and God bless you and I will see you on another fabulous lipstick, lip balm and literacy virtual book reading series. And you know as we roll on the show we wrap up with music. So thanks and God bless you. Bye. 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 Hello, my fabulous people. I'm right here at the Anoka County Authors Fair. I'm going to be flipping my camera and be going around to the author's table, hopefully. <laughs> because my table is going to be left unattended. But anyhow, I'm going to start from my table and show you what my table looks like. And then I'm going to go to all the different authors. Yeah. So today, 
today, this is our lipstick, lip balm and literacy, right here, this is my tablet, right here, so anyhow, I'm off the front of your shirt. <laughs> yeah. So this is about a Chinese state-sponsored cyber attack on medical device companies here in the Twin Cities. The Chinese uh, characters use some of the local Somali gang elements in town to do some of their dirty work, and my FBI agent stumbles into things. So the novel In Plain Sight takes place mostly in the Twin Cities, but I kick you around the world to Germany, France, and China, so it's an international thriller. It's the first in a series of spy thrillers, and the second one should be out for Thanksgiving for the holiday season. Cover for me. So, wow. so we had a lot of fun. Everything on the on the front of the book and in the back has meaning inside of the... Uh, in Her mom and dad, Melvin and Eleanor Jorgensen. The name of the book is The Talking Drum of the Congo. <laughs> And it covers um, their growing up years during the Dust Bowl and becoming missionaries, meeting each other in Bible college is a real sweet story of how they met. And then they traveled to Belgium and lived there for a year to learn French. And they had their five-year-old son with them and he learned French better than them. And then they went to Congo on an ocean liner and took a train to Stanleyville and then took a um, paddle boat all the way to the east side of Congo. And then they speak French. I speak some Bangala and I speak French. Can you say this afternoon? Can you say good afternoon in Bangala? In Bote? Thank you. <laughs> I'm a local author and I write paranormal romance. So vampires, witches, werewolves. They're all set in, this series is set in Anoka. And we guys want us of Halloween. Yes. Well, it, since Anoka is called the Halloween capital of the world, mm -hmm. I thought if someone's going to own a tap room, it would probably be witches. Yeah. So all these books are about the witches who own a tap room. The first three are a trilogy. And they're um, Minnesotan girls um, who are living. Uh, these two are based in Marquette. This is in New York City. And then the fourth book is an anthology of ten short stories. Well, this is I my, see you have more than one here. I do. This is my first book, and it's a pay it forward story where a little boy does a kind act and it just dominoes. And these books are about teddy bears, therapy dogs, and ghosts. So, and they're kind of true stories. I um, grew up in this house, and that's where it takes place mostly. Wow. And so I still live there. This book is called Bump, and it is about a little dog that experiences love of family and loss. What inspired the book? Actually, what inspired me was partially the dog who was living with my parents, and then my mother passed away, and the interaction between the dog and my parents. Thank you. Thank you. So this is a picture of the volunteers through volunteer work in the community. We also um, went to see the play museum, we went to the art museum together, because usually people will do that on their own. Hello! Hi! How are you? Fabulous authors. You are on lipstick, lip balm, and literacy. I like it. <laughs> I like it. It's a Facebook live show. So, could you tell us about your books? Uh, there's a couple different um, anthologies here. The anthology of Skew Books are um, themed anthologies that are coming out. Um, actually, there's one coming out tomorrow. Wow, congratulations. Uh, yep, yep there's, and it's a, a collection of short stories, artwork, flash fiction, poetry. So it's really great. It's great to be able to just read a few minutes, put the book down, and you've read a story. 
Um, and then the other two books over here are also both anthologies. Uh, Ambrosia is a poetry anthology, and the really cool part about Ambrosia is that there are eight poets in, in the book, and we all decided that rather than getting any money from the book, we are donating everything we make on that book to uh, the American Foundation for Suicide Prevention. Uh, I grew up in Anoka County. I was born at the little hospital on Ferry Street in Anoka, and I wrote on Ferry Street. On Ferry Street, there is there's, there's no hospital there anymore. It was a little house. It was a, a little four-bedroom house, and that's what there was the hospital. Um, I grew up north of Anoka in Oak Grove, and my books talk about growing up in a uh, small town in Anoka, coming to big the big city of Anoka for school. Uh, shopping and just it's just adventures of my sister and I living on this little isolated farm out in the country. Then the second book is um, takes off after this one, after the first one, and my dad was diagnosed when I was eight years old with paranoid schizophrenia. And dealing with that as an eight-year-old, what does it mean? How did it affect my life? How did it affect the family dynamics? That sort of thing. That's what the second book is about. So most of it's growing up in the 50s and innocent, you know, my, bar my Barbie doll and, and uh, little toys. My mother in my mother in law's typewriter. I'm not touched typewriter in here. I want to touch this. I couldn't imagine how I was going to get a penguin in the same book. Well, my name is S. Colin Ellsworth. I write Strong Witty Women and the Ghost They Encounter. My latest one, The House That Joey Built, is about a woman who's gone through loss in her life. And through that loss, she is briefly reunited with Joey. And when she returns to her, she discovers he built her a house in the woods that they love. And that's where she goes to heal. Is this your first time at the fair? This is the first time I've been at the Enoka Fair. Wow, nice. My name's Jonathan Den Hartzog. I'm a professor of American history. I teach at the University of Northwestern in St. Paul, technically Roseville, uh, but I uh, spend most of my day uh, trying to get students to understand American history. <laughs> yes, so my area of research specialty is the American Revolution and the Ameri the new nation that follows. And so growing out of this research is patriotism and piety, federalist politics and religious struggle in the new American nation. So hopefully there's a little drama in there as people are trying to understand what role is religion going to have in the nation and it turns out people disagree. They disagreed back then and so that's part of the American debate. My name is Heather Erickson and I'm an author and blogger from Blaine, Minnesota. And my first book is Facing Cancer as a Friend. And this was born out of the questions that were asked of us. How can we, uh, what, what are the things we can say to our friend who has cancer? Or um, what can we do to help? And it's really an encouragement to people that you don't even really have to get outside of your comfort zone. You can do the things that you are naturally good at. And it gives some helpful advice on how to um, approach those types of things um, in, in a really bite-sized form because who wants to spend all of their time reading the book when they can be doing it? The other book that I have is putting, um, it's called The Memory Maker's Journal and it's putting your memories into words. And this is a tool that will help people answer questions about their lives and tell the stories of their lives. Um, it's something that can be used by family members to ask grandparents even um, these questions and record them or write them down. But because those stories aren't lost. Thanks so much. Are you together? Yeah. It's my husband. He's in work. And he's been living with stage four lung cancer for five years. And so that was how I knew what to write in Facing Cancer.
I write children's educational books and this book has been around since 1992. It teaches kids to learn times tables with cartoons and stories. And it's available on Amazon. And I write memoir. This is the first memoir I wrote. It's called Sunlight on My Shadow. It's a story of my teen pregnancy that I kept secret for many, many years. I had a baby in 1967. I was going to an all-girls Catholic high school and, and told everyone I had a kidney disease and left school so I could have the baby and give it up for adoption. And the story is about my as an adult looking back and um, dealing with the grief and the shame from that time and coming away transformed and healed from all of that. And this book is called South of Ordinary. It just came out. It is a story of a backpacking trip that I took for a year and a half with my ex-husband. We went from Colorado Rockies to Argentina. And we went from one adventure to the next because he was kind of an adrenaline junkie and he loved high risk. And so the story is about me trying to keep up and prove I have the right stuff and finally I come to my own. Is African Women Connect. Uh, and basically it's about my experiences creating a network of African immigrant women in the Twin Cities area. And, and so I wrote about my experiences bringing women from like 20 different African countries together and navigating all the different cultures and um, expectations and that sort of thing. Um, it was a great experience and I've created many wonderful relationships. Um, a lot of doors were open. Uh, I got some pictures, a picture book here of uh, My name is Lee Bertman and um, I am honored to present my book. It's called Fighting for Delphine. And it is a World War II memoir of a local war hero, Ken Kruger, who lived right here in the Blaine area. And uh, he was a motor messenger in Patton's Third Army, delivering messages from Patton to the generals. And um, yeah, this is a photo of him when he was a young man. And this is when I met him, when he was in his 80s. And um, he was trying to find the girl he left behind. He was in uh, France, primarily delivering messages from General Patton to the front lines, a very harrowing job. But he also fell in love with a beautiful French woman called her Delphine in the book. And um, they met and fell in love and were engaged to be married. But the war ended and Ken had to come back to the States. He made a solemn promise that he would marry her, go back to marry her, and he never made it back. So when I found him or met him, um, he was actively looking for her. So I wrote the first part of the book in 2008 and then I took him back to France in 2011 so that he could try to find her again. So I probably the second half of the book just recently and um, so the second half of the book is included in this first volume and then we have some color photographs of our trip back to France. Uh, my name is Becky but I call myself Baggy Jeans. That's my pen name and this is a story, a true story, about my grandpa and how he found his dog, well how his dog found him because the dog ran away from Sheriff Earl Brown three times just to go with my grandpa. So I wrote a story about it. Wow, nice. Is this your first time at the fair? Yes, it is. It's my first time doing anything like this. <laughs> I have no oh, idea what I'm great. doing. You have a partner in crime right there. So tell us how do you feel about this experience today? Well, I think it's great meeting all the other authors and be like, how do you do this? What do you do? How do you publish? Okay, so talk to your people at UMC and Oprah. <laughs> what are you doing here today? Well, I came to see you for one thing. Oh. And just see all of the local <laughs> authors. So are you having a good day, Paul? I am, that's my table. 
Yeah. When you finish, you can come to my table. I will do that. Yeah. Give the story back home. Play your cards right. You know, by Deborah Sawyer. Simple steps to get ready by more. Family Whispers of Love by Jacqueline Milton. Money, the root cause of domestic violence by Deborah Sawyer. The Leader's Journey by Dr. Tyner. I declare, make your book a bestseller and a living level. This is the brain behind all the things happening here today. So can you tell us about yourself? I am I'm the Anoka Library. Yes, well my name is Rosalind Hope and I am the outreach librarian here and I organize this event. This is the second time we've done it. I've been working in Anoka County for 30 years next April. Wow, I wasn't wow. even born. I think my mother no, didn't meet my father <laughs> no. then. Yes. I mean, these two weren't born and I started, but I was already in work. These are our two Thank wonderful you. volunteers, Charles and Morgan. <laughs> yeah, that's a police, so you have a partner in crime also. <laughs> yes. <laughs> they are two of our favorite volunteers. Uh, nice. Nice. So, how has the experience been? How would you describe the experience from last year to this year? Since this the second one. Well, this year we are experimenting with writing workshops too. So we have two writing workshops over in the laptop lab. So not only is it about featuring local authors, but it's also giving them a chance to, you know, expand their writing skills. So that's kind of the way we've added to it. Wow, nice. So what should we be looking forward to next year? Next year it'll be somebody else will be in charge. But uh, so I'm not sure. I imagine we'll still do some writing workshops and maybe try to expand it again. So we'll see. Who has her own little girl named Greta to take care of her and the girl gets to have adventures and the bunny wants to come too so they start having adventures together and Lucy says that's all very well and good but the best place to travel is back home again. My third one is about um, Bobo's music and Bobo is a little black bear living in northern Minnesota who happens to like music and finally after meeting a number of um, critters up there decides that um, he needs to be a conductor to let all the music out and seems to be inside of him. But it doesn't come out on other instruments. There we go. This book is called I Miss My Friends and it's about when life throws you those curves and suddenly you don't have a friend with you um, for many reasons. Maybe they had to move, maybe they passed away. Um, anyway, I wrote the book because at a time in my life as a teacher, I had a little girl that that happened and I suddenly had to help my class deal with the loss. And so I wrote this book to help these children make that journey. And it's a book about how she finds out that those you love and those who love you are always with you. We have a lot of fabulous authors here today at the Authors Fair. There are all different kinds of stories, you know, from FBI to dog story and laws and friendship and, um, you know, beers. It's just a lot, a lot, a lot of books to read about and a lot of things to learn. So I really enjoy this myself. I've been having fun going out. So I have all of my fabulous people right here at my table. <laughs> how are you? Thanks so much. Wow, how was that? How was the interview? I really liked how Jerry talked about our mission for singles including she's working on volume two already <laughs> how nice she's working on volume two and the author's fair i hope you enjoyed it because i really had fun at the author's fair please i'm looking for uh you to give me tips to give me um questions and comments if you have questions you want to share bring it on if you have letters you want to write to me please send your letter to info at bukolaoriola.com i'll be glad to read your letters on the show yes i want to read letters sometimes i'll be glad to read your letters 
on the show i'll be glad to share your comments on the show and those of you who watch us on tv at north metro tv you are all super 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 fabulous so thank you so much until next time bye bye <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.